So I was just trying to explain to Stu in the top of the hour we were talking about what you were going to talk about. And uh, I want to start with what the Fed did. Because right now, if you look at the poll numbers that are coming out from all of the swing states, it's uh, pretty dark news for uh, Joe Biden. Yeah, new, new Bloomberg uh, poll that is out today of the swing states. Real quick, we'll go through them. Wisconsin, Trump 45, Biden 41. Georgia, Trump 49, Biden 43. Michigan, Trump 46, Biden 42. Pennsylvania, Trump 46, Biden 44. Nevada, Trump 47, Biden 44. North Carolina, Trump 49, Biden 40. And Arizona, Trump 46, Biden 42. That's not good. And Biden, if you're Joe Biden. If you're Joe Biden. <laughs> and that's, uh, th- and that, beca- that comes from Bidenomics. People are just not believing it. However, what the Fed did yesterday by saying they're going to lower the interest rate three times next year, doesn't that mean more free money is coming out and it will it will juice things to make people feel better for the short term? OK, so a couple things. First, you know, what happened yesterday is they decided they were going to hold rates steady. They do something called the dot plot, which is an expectation from the members of where they think interest rates are going to be. And from that projection, it was extrapolated that there could be three interest rate cuts next year. Now, that being said, uh, what the members project is always wrong. So (laughs) (laughs) I know this is this is shocking news. Yeah, right. right. Um, wow, and so, you know, they're, they're economists. They couldn't project their way out of a paper bag if they tried. So this is an expectation that if everything were to stay on the trajectory that they think with the same variables today, that they would be in a position to normalize rates. And what that is telling you is that they think that by that point in time, the monetary <laughs> policy will have worked its way through the system, mm-hmm. that you have inflation coming close to their target, probably uh-huh. not their target, and mm-hmm. that they're going to try to normalize interest rates. It doesn't mean that th- this particular statement does not mean that they are going to print additional money. It's just a shift in the interest rate. That being said, there are other factors that could lead to all of that happening. Um, but this is just, you know, hey, we have no idea what's going on, but we want to put something out there. By the way, as you know, you let in with Stu's poll numbers that could perhaps um, create some more optimism for people to say, oh, well, things are getting better. Maybe you should vote for Joe Biden. Correct. Correct. And that's, you know, this this is the one thing that the Fed can do. They can raise the interest rates. They can tighten money and they can make a politician's uh, life and reelection hell or happy. Uh, It is really, this is why you don't ever tie these two things together with politics, but they have, they have. So we'll see what happens. But but it's wild. If you think about what's happened, we've been in this massive tightening cycle and you have the indices, one of them hitting an all time high and two of them getting close back to all time highs. That's sort of the opposite that what should be happening with sure. policies. You have this weird thing that's going on where you have this magnificent seven tech stocks that are at this point more than a quarter of the S&P 500. It's the largest chunk that seven stocks have ever accounted for wow. in terms of the stock market, in terms of S&P 500 before. And so they are driving the narrative. You know, If you pulled that out and you normalize things, things look very, very different. So you're getting this kind of um, disparate story, something that would probably be very different and look a lot more like last year if people weren't so all in on AI and and all of these promises. So here's the, uh, by the way, I don't know if you've seen the AI newscast. Have you seen this yet? Came out yesterday. Do we, do we even have that? Do we have that pulled yet? No, I think we'll have to do it tomorrow. Um, There's a new AI newscast all written by AI And delivered by AI people that look absolutely real. And they're like, you know, don't worry about it. There's not going to be any bias because we're all computer generated. Like, that doesn't fill me with confidence. Okay, that doesn't make me feel good. But I digress. Um, Let me talk to you about the other thing. You wrote this great op-ed yesterday. Uh, for a, um, a as a warning to small businesses 
This makes no sense to me if if you're trying to do what the government says they're trying to do. What this looks like is let's attack the smallest business owners that we have in our economy and get them to close their doors. That's what it feels like to me. Explain what's yeah. happening. It's part that and it's part a massive data collection program that nobody knows about. This is a, a rule that goes into effect January 1st, 2024, that no one in the small business community had heard about. It was put on my radar by a couple of my great followers over the past few weeks. I had not heard out about it. I'm a small business expert, advocate, and somebody who owns a small business. Nobody told me about this. So this is the corporate transparency rule. And what they're trying to gather is beneficial owner information for business businesses. And it's estimated that this could impact up to 32 million small businesses, including sole proprietors that have entities. So this is focused on entities. So if you're a single member LLC, or if your business has a, an S corp, even if you don't have employees, you're impacted. And basically what they're saying is that you have to register with a group that's out of the treasury called FinCEN, which is the Financial Crimes Enforcement Network, because they want to pre prevent money laundering, right. much in the way that hiring 87,000 IRS deaths was meant to go after 800 billionaires, right? That, right. That's, now, but that's hang exactly on. what they're saying. But FinCEN is the group that tagged Hunter Biden that everybody ignored. Right. Correct. Right. Okay. Right. Yeah. And, and that's I mean, that's the irony of the timing here. Right. Is that you have all of these flags, um, suspicious activity reports and the like for Hunter Biden and the Biden family that you know were made and went completely ignored. But now you want to go after the small business. And why I say going after the small business is that there are all kinds of groups that are exempt. Uh, if you are a lot of the different financial services companies, they're exempt, I'm guessing because they already have to register with FinCEN. But if you are a large business, if you're, you have at least 20 employees and $5 million in revenue, you don't have to register for this either. Okay. Hang on just a second. So they're going after money launderers. Right. What crappy money launderer are you that you're not at least making $5 million? Hunter Biden made five million dollars in one deal. So this, what kind of what are you doing it for? Are you doing it for snacks? Yes. I mean, your that's money, ridiculous. You're money laundering for Doritos or something like that, just for fun and giggles. And that's what what the ridiculousness of it, that the burden, the invasion of privacy, the collection of small business information, which puts it at risk. Obviously, anytime, you know, not only is it a personal yeah. invasion of privacy privacy, but it's the potential for, you know, cyber so, criminals to go after it. What is it it's, that they're collecting on you? So it's called BOI, Beneficial Ownership Information. And so it's what you might think. It's your name. It's your address. It's all the names that you do business under. It's your government ID. So again, you, can, you, know, you don't need ID to vote, but to be a small business, apparently you need one. Um, so something like a driver's license or a passport. And they're going to associate all of that in this national database so that they can track who is doing business as a small business entity. And again, with so many, you know, up to 32 million small businesses in this country, the benefit of potentially tracking down a few money launderers, which we know they have one that they've done absolutely nothing about, versus the burden that this creates in terms of privacy. There's a fee, Glenn. Go, you know, surprise, surprise, oh, no. $85, $85. And that is if you don't need to hire someone else to make sure you've done this the right way. And if, you, a, and if you don't do it exactly right, a massive fine is coming your way, right? So not only fine, but you could also go to jail. Like this, oh there is a, a jail penalty associated with not participating in this. You have to not only do it the one time, which they say the initial burden is three hours. So that's assuming that you know how to do this the right way. But thinking about, think about three hours and filling out a form for a small business. I mean, that sounds pretty invasive, right? I don't and have then, three hours a day. I don't right. have three hours to do stuff. 
Because you know? it keeps them away from revenue generating productive yes. activity on some nonsense here. And then, by the way, anytime something changes, it is up to you to make sure that you keep them informed. And again, if you don't do it in a certain period of time, See, well, oh, I forgot. I moved. OK, well, now FinCEN is going to come out. This is this is the way um, Germany did it. All dictatorships do it every time they give so make so many laws that are on your back and your shoulder that you that you can guarantee you're breaking some law that you may not even know about but they've made it so everyone is a lawbreaker at some level or another so you better not step out of line you better shut your mouth right now because you think you can't go to jail oh Really, did you move last year? And did you let FinCEN know about it? You must be a money launderer. You must be, you know, that uh, $10,000 that you collected as a, a hobby mom and decided yeah. to put it in an LLC structure. Let, yeah, me, uh, let me give you one more thing uh, on this. This is being blamed. This isn't Joe Biden. This is not Joe Biden. And it's not. It happened, I believe, in January 2020. So but, um, Donald Trump was still in office. It went... It went to his desk. Both houses voted for it. Went to his desk. He vetoed it and said, this is Correct. insanity. He vetoed it. It went back. Both houses passed his veto. And then it was it was law. So this isn't Donald Trump's fault. This isn't right. Joe Biden's fault. This is the Congress and the Senate. I don't know what they're getting out of this except more information on you, but it is wrong. It, it is. And I think it's something we have to really try hard to repeal. If you are an existing business, you have all year, you have you know one full year in order to comply. If you're a new business, you start a new business, it's 30 days. But old businesses, existing businesses, entities have the you, full year. Where do so you even I, go? Where do you even go? Well, I put I put a statement in in the last House Small Business Committee on the record that said this needs to be a top priority. So the House Small Business Committee this is on their radar and we need to be picking up the phone and calling our representatives and particularly if you own a small business and say this needs to stop this there's absolutely no benefit to this and all it does is it's a mass data collection program against small business that's going to make it harder for people to start and for people to operate and create more penalties and shift the landscape again in favor of big businesses. So I am personally not going to look at compliance until, you know, <sighs> at least the back half of next year and yeah. try to do everything possible to get this repealed.